I'm so glad you said that because as you were as you were talking about that, I thought, you know what? Why do we? This is a great beer to have in the morning. Yeah, this is waffle Belgian waffles with syrup and salty, meaty bacon on the side. Pints and Pairings is brought to you in part by Word Driving and the Beer Cave. Learn more about our sponsors at hopheadshead.com slash pints and pairings. Hello, hello, and welcome to Pints and Pairings. I'm Curtis Taylor, also known as Hophead Said. I'm Jason Hendrick with Everybody's Hungry. Before we get started with this very special anniversary flight that we've been doing. Part tres. We are in the third episode. Uh, we'll be hitting the Belgian Golden Strong. We'll be just Psh. like right on, head on. We're going to be taking that in just a second. Give a big shout out to our sponsors, lab805.com. Our great signage out front, letting everyone out in the Bear House 101 dining room know that we are in fact back here. And we are on air <laughs> right are, now, everyone. We are on air. Food share of Ventura County. You know, the, the last episode I said something about that they feed 75,000 families. That would be incredible in one year, but that is what they do every, every month. single month. And, you know, part of why we carry them through is because they help get the exposure to the show out. They love the, the education and passion that we provide our show in the same way that they try to educate the community and really share a passion for feeding those in need, but also trying to build up um, what we call shortening the line. That's self-reliance. There's actually 102,000 people a month that need the assistance, but th- right now they're only able to hit 75,000, and that's why we continue to share out their brand so that you can help out. And FoodShare sponsors you in a whole slew of other things, not least of which is you're a, you're a regular guest on a Saturday morning show here in, in Ventura called uh, 805 with Thomas Andy. And so, I mean, that Saturday morning's what, now 7 to 10? Yeah, 7 to 10. Three hours, three hours of AM radio. Jason brings you all kinds of great stuff, talking about uh, all the foods and restaurants in Ventura County. So... You can always go uh, go to uh, everybody's hungry uh, dot org and find all of his past podcasts. If you happen to be in this neighborhood or traveling through, and you want to go, where should I eat? Jason's got the lowdown. One really spinning off on that educational track too. Another great resource and reference for all things beer and the brewing industry is hopheadsaid.com. You know, we archive this show at hopheadsaid.com slash pints and pairings, but. Part of why we do that is because there's a lot of great supporting content when it comes to the brewing industry and, and the leaders that are bringing wonderful things to your glass. So if you want to learn more about beer styles, events, pairings, and really what news is coming down the pipe with breweries, go to hopheadsaid.com. And when we're at the Lauderton Studios in my garage, I will pronounce it that way for you, <laughs> you, you have some aversion to me saying my gay garage. It is the happiest place in my house when we're there at <laughs> 9 o'clock in the morning drinking beer. Touché. So the, the, the Lauderton Studios, uh, so anyway, the Beer Cave supplies our beer when we're in studio. You can find them at 231 Village Commons Boulevard, right off the 101 freeway. <laughs> it's a perfect spot. We're driving also, you know, because burp, burp. when we drink for two hours straight, you gotta get away you, home. You, yeah, you gotta get and home. And your vehicle. And you, the way they do that is they send out two people in a car. One of them gets in your driver's seat and gets you, your car, and them to the destination. And the other person chases you down. Right. And I tell you what, my drivers are always so happy that I'm just this happy go lucky, chatty. Could be buzzed. a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. And then, of course, uh, Barrel House 101, because, you know, we're here. And <laughs> it's it's we aren't paying rent on the space. We're 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 just happy that Joby allows us to uh, come in and take over for. Well, a while. and again, a premier tap house located in the heart of Ventura, off the California Street exit. They have 101 beers on tap, but a really great menu too that just continues to improve week after week. Chef Mandy is really just stepping up all these wonderful, delicious menu items that go with the beer that we're drinking here on this show. Not to mention Anastasia Chavez busting out on the pastry uh, goods and all the wonderful desserts. I know. Just I'm so stoked. Uh, you know, you, you want to we haven't been talking about the desserts other than just kind of mentioning them in these in this might be a great segue into the, the the prankster by North Coast that we're doing. It's a Belgian golden strong ale and the what you and and uh, Anastasia have come up with. I keep wanting to say stash and I will not go that <laughs> You and Anastasia, you've got me thinking that way and then uh, but anyway, I mean, the, 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 the pairings that you two have come up with are just, I'm just so excited to go to get to them. Well, I'm looking forward to that pairing as well. And part of why we went with the, the prankster, the North Coast um, Belgian Golden, is for 
especially at the third spot in this flight. We did the Pilsner, then the Baltic Porter. I wanted to wash away a little bit some of that Baltic Porter flavor, but also have a beer that would hold up on its own because it's got to stand in its own time, you know, time slot, basically, in the third time slot. <laughs> and this beer definitely does that. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on with the Belgian Golden, and a lot of that has to do with the way Belgians are made and the ingredients that are in there. The grains and the yeast that are used, I love Belgian yeast. And I'm really excited about the industry leveraging Belgian yeast in more and more styles other than Belgians. Because I think it adds a really cool funk. There's some fruit and some crispness that will come out depending on which strain of Belgian yeast you're using. Yeah, and Americans are, <laughs> American brewers are working really hard to kind of capture that. When it turns out that the Belgians were just doing it in the laziest of methods, yeah, just leaving the, win the windows open. Yeah, let the wild yeast <laughs> float in. But, you know, we have domesticated a lot of the Belgian yeast at this point. As you said, though, <laughs> brewers are trying to recreate the outdoor, spontaneous, wild aspects of Belgian yeast. So we're getting back to the roots of how Belgians even kind of started. To a certain extent, I think they're doing a really great job of that. Saison's, for one, one of my favorite beer styles. There are you know, dozens of just fantastic world-class Saison's around. There's also some that aren't so good. <laughs> and, and the Saison and actually was a consideration for this flight, but again, coming after the Baltic Porter, it was gonna be too thin. Um, I wanted to capture that same fruit and same essence, but the, the light, lightness of a Saison just wasn't gonna hold. Right. So looking at the, some other examples, we're drinking Prankster, you've got Duval, you've got Horny Devil, you've got some of these other really, you know, Horny Devil by uh, Ale Smith, one, which is one of my favorites. There is a wide range in between those three beers that we've just talked about. So this one is light on the pepper, this one is light on the crisp. Duval is high carbonation, uh, a lot crisper. There's, there's still the fruity kind of flavors in it. Horny Devil has a more pronounced pepper note. And so it's just, it, you know, you're using the basic same, in, the same basic ingredients. You've got a bunch of malt. And so you've got a lot of alcohol. <laughs> yep. And then you use these three different yeast strains, which I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that, that that why we've got such a variance just in those three that I've talked about. When it shows the diversity of the style, you can have, you could drink your way through Belgians for years and probably never cross anything that's totally identical unless you're drinking the exact same beer. But you know, you mentioned the alcohol percentage too. This one's coming in at seven point seven one eight. I was gonna say seven point six, so I'm even missing out on point two of deliciousness. <laughs> but seven point eight percent, you don't taste the alcohol in the way you'd expect no. for a seven point eight. It's pretty well balanced. Mm -hmm. There's a great muddled kind of melony sweetness to this beer for me, both in the aroma and on the palate, and some tropical notes, like a little papaya. And as you said, it doesn't have the same high carbonation or crispness that you would get with the Duval, but you're getting a really awesome opportunity to put food with this. And the, I fell a uh, victim last time with the, the, the porter that we we're talking about by looking at the dessert pairing. And this time I hit it really quickly so that I wouldn't see it because I didn't want that kind of influence, that, that dessert pairing to influence what I was going to say. One, one of my favorite... Uh, pairings with this is uh, a vegetarian dish, but it's roasted vegetable uh, vegetables, vegetables, and uh, <laughs> so you've got this where you're you're talking. Um, I'm talking zucchinis. I'm talking summer squash. I'm talking bell peppers, and so there's uh, a certain amount of sweetness in those vegetables too, which would kind of mirror what's happening here. I I have experience with. I have experience with pairing this with the, the Ale Smith, the, the Horny Devil, which okay. is a little more peppery. But this would work just as well. This one has, this is going to resonate more with the sweetness uh, out, coming out of the, the, the yellow squashes and the zucchinis. Um, and then you're looking to lightly pepper the vegetables, which will help kind of dry out this finish as well. So you've got that peppery finish, that kind of will help to balance the, the sweetness. And for me, there's a residual kind of banana note that comes out 
with this as I exhale. And it leaves again that tropical, almost, you remember when you're a kid and you get the, your parents would make the fruit salad of strawberries, mandarin orange segments, banana, and you'd let it muddle into the right. bowl for a while and the juice at the bottom. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very reminiscent of that for me. It kind of takes me back to childhood a little bit. But I think one of the things, part of why I bring that up is to caution it as well. Something that's too sweet and too sugary or too similar, I think you're going to lose the distinction of the beer and that dish. So I like your idea of going more crisp. This could benefit for something really awesome like apple or jicama. Mm. We're getting the jicama is going to give you the sweetness, but also a starchy, crisp potato aspect. A great um, crisp like pinata or pink lady apple. So you're getting some acidity to cut through the the muddled sweetness of this beer is going to be to your favor. Yeah, I would. The the jicama, I, I I'm, I'm, I've got a recipe that I I've, I've been wanting to make at home, but I haven't been able to find jicama. And one of the substitutes I had was. Uh, was mentioned was a pear as well and so thinking about now a pear i think would do would resonate with this beer really well but maybe even just a little too much and and i was going even towards the grill pear so you know you put it have it put it in the um put it on the grill kind of crisp that up a little bit that's the kind of of sweetness that i'm finding in this beer um, I don't know if that's, I mean, if you, if you, if you don't mind overly sweet desserts um, and resonating pairings, then I think that that might be a way to go. Sure. So let's go backward into the entree category a little bit though, because all of a sudden in my mind, especially being right near the coast, I'm thinking fish, but not flaky, delicate fish, because this is going to really just crush a poor little trout or something. Let's go a meaty, like grilled swordfish, open fire grill, like summertime style with a lime butter. So you're getting, again, that kind of resonating butter note, that kind of little bit of sweetness, that creamy that you would think of. But then you're cutting it with the acidity of the lime. Mm -hmm. And that meatiness of the fish is really going to hold its own. Well, and as you're talking about the lime, too, that's kind of leading into the dessert pairing that you and Anastasia put together this this key lime Italian pudding. So explain what this is in particular, because I, I'm not sure what this is. I have to tell you, I'm not entirely sure the, the designation of Italian pudding, but part of why I went with this key lime idea is as we were tasting this beer, especially as it warmed up, again, it was giving off these great banana, tropical, muddled sweetness notes. And I felt, man, it needs some salt and it needs some acidity. And what is salt in the city? Margarita, right? Like, <laughs> as, uh, she goes, I think you're describing a cocktail. I'm like, well, maybe we need a cocktail inspired dessert. And we're gonna maybe do some kind of key lime custard or maybe in a margarita style ice cream. And now she's got this Italian pudding. So I'm, we're gonna have to get her on the show, you know, another episode to talk about the designation of what that means. But trying to bring in that citrus zest, that, that really sharp, acid to cut through some of the sweetness and balance it back down is what we were targeting and i I think that's what this beer needs too it is the the contrast in order to make the beer itself stand out just a a, to make the beer's presence known a little more too i'm gonna staying in the entree because apparently i'm getting hungry though it doesn't need to be restricted to citrus and tropical fruits the other thing I'm thinking of is a great pork loin or a little bit of a gamier meat, but with a like a raspberry barbecue sauce or a, um, a raspberry or, you know, kind of fresh berry inspired glaze mm-hmm. because that fruity sweetness will still resonate, but there's just enough tartness in some of those berries, whether it be a raspberry or a blackberry or boysenberry, and then that really great minerally gaminess of a darker meat could help kind of pull things together but in an unusual way so that way you're not totally resonating with that sweetness but you're also not forgetting about it it's kind of making me think of uh, a balsamic vinegar a, a high quality uh, maybe um, I want to say something like a plum that has a really deep sweetness with it but it's balanced by that by, by the vinegar the acidity now, I think this beer could be 
that sweetness, kind of what you're talking about. And just looking at a high quality uh, vinaigrette with a salad, or even just going back to what I had said earlier too, with these these summer vegetables, the the summer squashes and the zucchinis, drizzling that over just a tiny bit. So you've got the uh, roasted vegetable, so you've got the sweetness, and then you've got uh, this balancing component of the the vinaigrette. Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to go wrong with any of those ideas. It could use some great um, kind of herb components too, though. We talked in the last episode with the Baltic Porter about a caprese salad. And I don't want to duplicate that entirely, but that tomato basil element to that salad is just, it, it's a really smart play. Pizza with a real simple kind of margarita style. So you got your fresh mozzarella, you got the tomato and the basil. And then the crust is going to resonate with the, the yeast and the breadiness of the Belgian anyway. That's going to be a really easy pairing. If you want to really bring a, a friend into the Belgian beer world that maybe hasn't experienced them before or doesn't understand it, the good way to do that would be a simplistic pizza that everyone's going to love and then put a beer in their well, hand. And, and definitely the prankster too because uh, of the three that I mentioned earlier, this one fall is, it is a wonderful entry-level sort of it, it's not going to be over the top on phenolics. It's not going to be over the top on spices. It's not going to be over the top on carbonation. And so a, a, a really approachable, plus it's packing a punch at 7.8% too. It should be a good time. Right. There was one thing that I was going to say right before that, and then I got sidelined. It'll come to me at some other point. But it was just the, the whole idea of, of the approachability of this beer too, and that it's a, a great way for you to bring people in for you for any of beer geeks around who are looking for a way to bring in the the bud millers drinkers in your life yeah to bring them into your your craft beer world for this is a good newer one. people that are drinking beer that haven't really gotten into the depths and the, the the beer geekery as we call it if you say hey i want you to try this belgian it's pretty assuring that they're going to have a little bit of glint in their eye and they're, they're going to get a little bit wide-eyed thinking wow, this guy has got something cool for me to try. And as a category, Belgians are cool. Well, that's about as simple as I can put it. Well, and just to keep, keep in mind, too, that Belgian beers are generally low on hops, which is what a Bud Miller's drinker is averse to as they get started. And sure. so it, it's very easy for them. Uh, as we close out this segment, just remind everyone you know, to follow the conversation with uh, hashtag Pints and Pairings, hashtag Beer Suggestioneers. Uh, you can find us at Hophead said slash pints and pairings, and you'll find all of our contact information. Yep. Jason at Everybody's Hungry, me at Hophead said. Give us a cool YouTube, like on Facebook, iTunes, and then you can see all of the feeds coming through. There it is. So, uh, you know, we've got one more beer to go. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Double IPA just to, <laughs> to put this flight to rest, I guess. And to get us jacked up. There we go. And I'm... I'm so looking forward to this beer. See, I did that. I did. I saw how you did that. If you don't know what he's talking about, you're going to have to come back to for the double IPA uh, segment. Either look in the archives or wait till next week. It'll be there. <laughs> there you go. All right. So, uh, as always, I want to remind everyone to eat, drink, and be happy. And we'll see you the next pour. Pints and Pairings is brought to you in part by the Beer Cave, located at 231 Village Commons Boulevard in Camarillo, California. If you prefer a cocktail or some vino, this neighborhood market also has a great selection of premium spirits and wine, along with an attached deli for a quick sandwich to go. When you stop in, be sure to mention that you heard about them right here on the Pints and Pairing Show, and maybe grab a sandwich for me on your way out.